What's up everybody? Welcome back to Ian's Life. We're out here at the hangar. I wanted to take a chance to show you just a few of the modifications and some of the work that we've done with the Rans S6. Stay tuned. I'm a little bit into some work now, and I just thought it would be a good chance to show you a little bit of the ownership of an experimental aircraft and some of the things you can do and that sometimes you have to do to keep your airplane flying and make it better for you. Right now, we're in the middle of an oil change, and while we had the oil out, we decided to take care of a problem we've been having with our oil temperatures. During an extended climb, the oil temps were just climbing way higher than we liked. And right here, this is the stock oil cooler fits into what I'll call the nostril vent by the spinner. And it's just, I mean, compared to the size of my hand, it's not the biggest cooler in the world. Now, I'm sure that in a cooler climate, or if you get this thing set up absolutely perfect, you could probably make this keep your temps down, but we're having trouble. So we are adding a secondary cooler, which we're going to be mounting down underneath the bottom, where the exit air from the cowling will get a little bit of flow through it. We're gonna put that in line with the stock one. We've got our cooler over here. My father's holding it. We've got our bracketry that we've started to make already. This project's been going on for a few days. But today, we're going to get that guy installed. We're going to get our new lines in place, which are going to run around down there and then come back over on this side, up to the top, and back into our oil can. And in a minute, I'll show you some of the stuff we've done in the cockpit. So one of the things I have to do is fabricate some new oil lines. We've got two new lines going in. We're actually replacing an old one that we could have probably used, but it just had a little bit of cracking at the end. It's a good opportunity to go ahead and put a new one on. I've got my fitting in the vise. I'm about to take my hose. This is a push lock hose. Drop that on here. That fitting is basically the same as this guy right here, 90 degree AN8 fitting. We'll put our hose in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do two hoses because I have two of them with 90 degrees on one side and then they're going to be either straights or 45 on the other. Get one side in place so that we can put it in the airplane, route it, cut it to length, fire sleeve it, and then I'll go back over here and put my new other sides on. And that is our new end. So we've made our new hose piece. I've got some fire sleeve on here. We've got one of our old 90s on here, and a new 45 on bottom. Fire sleeve's loose for now. We'll adjust that to where it gets down near the exhaust where it needs to be. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get this on the airplane. Show them the oil cooler. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's actually a good point. We've got the uh, oil cooler not completely mounted. Our front mounts here. We've got to build a new piece to support the back, but this does hold it in place. 
So this is going to catch exit air coming out of the bottom of the cowling. I know it's not necessarily the freshest air, but one of the things with radiant cooling like this is that a radiator will provide some cooling effort, even if it's not in an absolutely ideal location. And since all we're doing is supplementing the original cooler and almost tripling our total radiant capacity, this should be pretty good. One of the other things we're gonna be working on is these vents. These vents may have been okay for the more northern latitudes this airplane used to be at. They're just a little rotate item. You can rotate them from in the cabin and uh, shut them on and off. They get a little air on you, but down here in Texas, I have a real fondness for these big snap vents that Aircraft Bruce and a few other places sell. Much bigger, and they'll duck out and actually get this entire area. That'll catch air, tilt it out, They'll really put some air in the cab, and really, I had them on the Kit Fox, really liked them on the Kit Fox. So we're gonna go ahead and replace these. See if I can get this, fo there we go, get focus on that. We're gonna pull these out, cut our holes a little bigger, snap these guys in their place. Okay, now you'd think this would be the most terrifying part, but no, we missed that because all hands were on deck when we had to angle grind our stripped out bolt right here, about two millimeters from our nice acrylic bubble doors. So now that makes for the terrifying part. This is only mildly terrifying in comparison. Oh boy, come on there, and we're through. We lucked out. This circle is the perfect diameter, as it happens, to take out the screw holes. On that, you can see our original screw holes right on the very edge. We lucked out, we're perfect. No screw holes in the corner. And now, we can just... Clean. Did you bring any uh, sandpaper to dress the edges? I did not bring any sandpaper to dress the edges, but you can't get to them anyway once the things in place. So I think what we'll do is take it. So are we going to dress the edges and then put it in or? Um, I think all we need to do here is just do, oh, okay. do this and sort of take off some of this flashing that's uh, remained in place. Um, uh, if I can get to it. Yeah, and now we can take our new snap vent these guys, talk about simple, all you do is just compress them a little bit, get them inside the acrylic, and down. And that is our new vent installed. So that guy will drop out like that. Got all right, let me come around and get a yeah. front view. Got to clean and some that, acrylic shards Put your up. finger in there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, finger. Yeah. I can Hand, okay. put my whole, yeah. Can you talk about a, a yeah. improvement in airflow? This ought to be great. All right. Fantastic. Love it. All right, one more to go. While he's doing this, you may ask the question, why did we get a RANS? And the answer to that, number one is, I have a sport pilot license. I don't have a regular pilot's license, so I'm limited to 1,390 pounds or whatever the sport pilot limit is. And the kit box that, uh, that Ian was flying had a 1,500 pound gross, so it didn't qualify as a sport aircraft. So we decided so that dad could fly, we'd get a sport aircraft. At the same time, dad had a hard time landing the, uh, the kit fox. And uh, Ian went out and looked at different airplanes, and he flew an S7 and raved about how nice the controllability was and how easy it was to land. 
but in my talking with friends, everybody seemed to want a side-by-side -side aircraft. So I told him, go look at S6s and see if they fly as good as the S7. And although I think he likes the S7 a little better than the S6, the S6 is a pretty nice airplane. And the, uh, the stick harmony, the, the control harmony on this aircraft is just wonderful. And dad can land it really well. So uh, we're super happy with this particular airplane. So that's, that's the two reasons why we switched to the Rams. It's actually a little bit awkward because of the dome of this door. You can't get... Get all different sides like that's really good but in fact it's almost gone through but the bottom is still tilt it a little bit bottom side and then we'll I don't know why they say to do this but who am I to argue with the experts oh so easy love it and yet again, we've taken out all of the uh, screw holes right to the corner, so we should have nice, smooth, yeah. Just got to clean up a little bit of flashing on the edge and install the new vents. Almost like they gift wrapped it for us. And that's the number two vent in place. Awesome. That is going to be great. I can't wait to fly with these. Fantastic. Now, we're cool. The airplane is uh, well on its way to being cool. Good stuff. Try not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town. Stars. I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me, no Nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive When I'm in this town Look at these beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me, no Nothing can break me And that's the oil cooler fully secured We've put a new bar in place here You can see we just used some lined clamps to put our bar in here a couple pieces of aluminum off of that with some more line clamps down to the oil cooler of course the front mount we had before and this thing is really solidly mounted in here we've tightened down all the fittings so next thing is going to be to put some oil in it spin it over we're going to pull the spark plugs off of it and disable the ignition module so we don't have any spark Good morning. shut down the uh, fuel and spin it over until we have oil pressure once we've got oil pressure, go ahead and hook that all up, start it up. Look at these beautiful stars, I want to drive a faster car. They my troubles to rest, blow the smoke through my cigarette. We ran it, no leaks, and temperature stayed nice and cold while the uh, cylinder heads were coming up. Now, not a fair judgment with no cowling on it. We don't really know how the airflow is going to be, and it's a fairly cool day, but it's a good start to everything. So we're gonna cowl it up, go for a little flight, see what we get. Not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at these beautiful stars, I wanna take a trip to Nothing can break me, no, nothing can break me
Visibility one zero, ceiling two thousand two hundred broken. Eight is a flip. Three thousand overcast. Temperature two four, dew point one niner. Altimeter two niner eight four. Both of my latches are latched. The pigtail is on the. This is in. Fuel. Gas is on. Okie dokie. I'm going to go ahead down. Three, five. Oh, nine one four zero. Bravo hooks tower. Make right traffic. Runway three five right. Clear for takeoff. Three five right. Clear for takeoff. Right traffic. Four zero. Bravo. All right. Check our uh, arrival in. No thing going on down there. And lights are on. Set. Get a bit of rain. Eh, as long as it doesn't get any worse, we're fine. And I don't yeah. see anything coming that's going to no. get us. Okay, we're in the green. In the green. You keep an eye on those numbers as I'm flying. Thank you. Well, it's now up to 180. That's a good sign. Red temperature is good. November 710, right, Max performance climb for altitude. Turn wind 330 at 7, altimeter 2985, runway 35 left, clear to land. Oil pressure's still good. Oil temperature's just under the green. Sonar head temperature's good. I got the slip and in the climb to slow it down. That's hilarious. Yeah, you burned an 8.2, 8.1. That's everything she's got. I want it that way. I want it to. It's got a Cessna over here well below you. He's pulling out away from you. That's okay. Obviously. He's going around too. Yep. It's a race, 172 versus Randa 6. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our country, do have moderate precipitation about a mile and a half south of the field and uh, heavy, heavy to severe, extreme precipitation about three miles south of the field. Yeah, we better put it back. I was going to say, we're, our oil yeah. temps have actually gone back down again, so yeah. I'm going to call this good and say let's just bring it on back. Yeah. November 4, Sierra Bravo, taxi to parking, monitor ground, 121.8. Taxi to park, ground point eight. thanks for your help, 4, Sierra Bravo. Well, glad we landed when we did, it's coming down now. But still, that's a good day of work. Oil coolers installed, vents are done, planes tested. As soon as the weather turns, we're good to go and do some flying. So that's all for this one. Until next time, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.